All right, so now we're going to go ahead and just start up the uh, virtual machine. Uh, then it's going to boot off the ISO that we installed or uh, that we attached to the machine. Um, and this usually takes, uh, depends on how fast your computer is, but it takes a few minutes or so. Um, and right now it's just going to load up the ISO. And like I mentioned before, you can actually take this free NAS program and just install it on any old computer, but you want to make sure that you have enough disk space um, to back up your time machine and have enough uh, days that go back. So we'll just let this boot. All right, so we're coming up on the actual install part. Uh, here's our menu, one through nine, and we're gonna wanna pick nine, uh, where we actually install this to the hard drive. Um, and I pick option number three, um, because this will uh, install it and we'll get a swap. So it asks where we want to install from. We say the CD, and then this one is actually where we're installing the OS2, and that was the smaller drive. And then here we're just changing the swap partition, uh, which is always twice as much as the RAM. All right, and that's finished. And then we'll go ahead, hit enter to continue, we'll continue. Um, and then we can exit out of there because that's done. And then from here we'll go ahead and just uh, shut it down because we want to uh, detach the ISO from the virtual machine so we don't have to boot from that anymore. So once that shuts off, the window goes away, just go to the settings of the virtual machine again uh, and then storage, click on your CD-ROM and just say empty. Um, and then we can go ahead and start that virtual machine back up. Um, and then we can configure an IP address so we can actually physically connect to it. Uh, they do include a pretty nice web interface. Uh, I'll just go ahead and hit enter here. Um, and then this will actually boot up. It's, it's a really tiny install. There's nothing to it. So you don't, we originally assigned five gigs to the drive. You probably don't need even need that much. Um, but that's fine. I have the space, so 5 gigs is fine. Um, and we'll give it another second here to boot up. Uh, and then we'll start the IP configuration so we can connect our Mac to our uh, Time Machine share. Alright, so we'll pick number 2 to give it an IP address. No, we don't want to use DHCP. And then we'll just assign it an IP on our network. And I'm just going to use 220. That's fine. Gateway. Uh, most of the stuff you should have an idea of what it is already. DNS server. Most of the stuff is just going to be your router. No IP version 6. Finish up. Or reboot the network. And there we go. We're done. Now we can go to a web browser and go ahead and configure free now so we can actually use it for our time machine backup okay so now we're in our web browser um, we get a login page we go to the IP address that we did in the command line um, 220 in this case and the default username and password is admin and the password is free NAS NAS so once you log in you go to the system view just a basic overview of your system um, and under system uh, settings you can configure all this this is where you change your username um, things like that but for the purpose of this video we're gonna go real quick and just go to the disk management um, and then I just click scan for disk to see if it finds something but it wouldn't because I just made this uh, virtual virtual machine so I'd have to go ahead and add and then we pick our larger drive give it a description if you want you don't have to that's okay and then uh, we'll leave it um, unformatted we don't need to format it at this time because we'll just do that later. Then we say apply changes. Then I'll go ahead to disk and mount point and then we'll add a mount point. And then this is where we actually would where it gets formatted so we can use it. And we'll pick our large disk again. Um, mount point name. Give it a friendly name. I'm gonna call it data. And then the default settings are fine after that and just go ahead and click add. So there we go, apply changes again. Now we have our mount point, we have something we can use. So now we're gonna go to uh, services and AFP, 
this is already all set up. Um, I added Time Machine. First, I enabled it on the right and added Time Machine as a name, and then local user authentication because we'll add a user. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a share. Um, first, I'm going to find the path, and there's my data. So I'll just pick that, say OK, give it a name, uh, just call it Time Machine or something that you can remember. Um, and then I think all the defaults are fine. Um, I just give it a little description there, and then I can say OK at the bottom or add because uh, that's all we really need to do. And then apply again. And then once we apply, we have the, the share all set up for our Mac to connect to. Now we just want to add a local user to actually access that because the, we don't want to give uh, everybody access to that. And I'll just call it backup. Uh, full name, backup, yeah, that's fine. Password, who cares? Just type something in there. Out. Yeah. In the primary group, I'll uh, just make it uh, admin probably. No, not wheel. Let's put admin. So I'll make it admin. Um, and then the actual additional group would be wheel. Uh, because that SharePoint that we made, the data SharePoint, had the wheel. Um, as the other owner and then we just go ahead and click add that's fine and then say apply and there we go we have our time machine um, share set up alright so here we are we're on our Mac now uh, this particular Mac is running 10.6 still works the same as 10.5 uh, so we'll go ahead um, first thing you have to do is you have to enter this command in, and this command basically tells Time Machine that go ahead you can use this network uh, share as a Time Machine backup. You have to enter this um, or your Time Machine won't work and it won't see the share um, as a Time Machine backup. And I'll have it on my website mycomputersjunk.com and you can see the actual command. So now we just go Command K, connect to the server. That's the same IP that we assigned for NAS. And then here's our backup password, our backup username and password. Say connect. Uh, sure, we'll remember it. And then uh, there's our time machine share. And uh, as we see on the bottom there, uh, for space available, that is the sign that we or the size that we assign to the actual share. And this is where you'd want to make it pretty big. So I click on the time machine icon on the bottom and just say setup. And then select my disk. And there's my disk. Use as a backup. And then it'll ask for a password because it's on the network, and that's fine. And then under options, you can actually configure um, things that you don't want backed up. And I'd recommend this for certain things because there's always things in the computer that don't, don't need to be backed up. And there we go, 115 seconds, it'll start backing up. And of course, the first time you do this, it'll take quite a while. I used wireless and it backed up 100 gigs in about uh, four hours. So that was a quick and dirty way to set up a time machine backup, and hopefully your data is safe now. So if you have any questions, visit mycomputerisjunk.com.